Hello and welcome to another episode of the Rotated Cuff Expert. I'm Dr. Orcutt, and today we're going to talk about something uh, that was requested in my comments. So if you have any comments, any thoughts, any ideas of what you'd like me to cover in future episodes, uh, please re relay those in the comments. Um, if there's anything you'd like me to do differently, please do that as well. It'd be nice, but you know, do that as well. Today we're going to talk about infection. And so infection, obviously anytime you have surgery, anytime you make a nick in the skin anywhere, you can have an infection. And so in shoulder surgery, certainly there are risks of infection. Now I'll say in shoulder surgery, arthroscopic, so rotator cuff most of the time is arthroscopic, and therefore we don't, we have a rare incidence of infection. So infection is approximately 1%. It's a little bit higher in when we talk about bigger surgeries like uh, reverse total shoulder replacements or total shoulder replacements. Reverse total shoulder replacement actually has the highest uh, uh, incidence of infection of any shoulder surgery. Um, so if you have questions about that, specific uh, surgery, please have heard my recent um, uh, YouTube video about reverse total shoulder. So today we'll talk about infection just in general. Uh, this is gonna be a several part series. I'm not sure how many parts, certainly at least two. We'll start off with what is, you know, what are you, what are you looking for infection? What, what would make you think that you have infection? And it can be tricky early on because infection often is pain, increased pain. Well, as most people know who've had a shoulder surgery or had uh, friends, family who've gone through shoulder surgery, it hurts. And so to, to differentiate pain um, is a little bit difficult. Uh, and so we'll look at other markers, look at pain out of proportion, again, a little bit hard to know, uh, pain that's progressing, that's worsening, right? We would think and we would like to think and hope that as the surgery uh, time goes by, so as post up day zero, probably no pain because you have a block or have a, have an anesthesia. So probably no pain or little pain the day of surgery. The day after surgery is pretty bad. And again, look at my video about day after surgery, how to minimize that. Then each day afterwards should be slowly getting a little bit better. Maybe when you start therapy, the increase of pain goes up again. Um, but you could understand that because you're doing more stuff with therapy. And then slowly after that, it should again begin to slowly come down. And if we see something, we're being, beginning to see it slowly increase, well certainly that's a warning sign of maybe infection. We also look at the skin. Is there a wound? Is the wound um, not healing? Is the wound draining? Or does it have a, uh, you know, an area that it's not healing? So it looks like maybe it's an infection. Increased redness, again a little bit hard after surgery. Increased warmth, again a little bit hard after surgery. Um, but those kind of things we think about um, and then maybe we look at take blood from the patient and then test it. And we have a few markers that we look for. One is CBC, so that's a, a complete blood count, kind of where your blood count is. If it's elevated, then maybe it's an infection. It's going to be elevated after surgery. We know that because that, it's an inflammatory marker. So inflammation can raise all these up. Key point, inflammation is just um, increasing uh, fluid because of an event. So inflammation can ca be caused by surgery and not be an infection. Infection is truly infectious, which means there's a bacteria, most of the time a bacteria that's causing the infection. And so there's a big difference between inflammation and infection. Big difference between anti-inflammatories and antibiotics. That's a key point to make is that you're going to have some elevation on these inflammatory markers after surgery, regardless of if you're infected or not. So we have to be very careful in interpreting those results. And that's why it's important for you to talk with your doctor about if you need to get those blood work and to really be able to talk through that blood work because it's not really cut and dry. But we look at CBC, complete blood count. We look at ESR, SED rate, which again is another inf inflammatory marker. And then CRP, C-reactive protein, same thing. It's gonna be elevated too. CRP is a little bit more sensitive in, in that it goes down faster after surgery than the other two. And so CRP may be a little bit better for us to determine whether this is really an infection or just an inflammatory response to the surgery. Okay. 